Hi, I'm Vincent DePasquale with Fader Pro, and I'm very happy to be partnering with TrueFire and Universal Audio to bring you a series of videos to help you get started in home recording. Now is such an exciting time to be creating music, and no matter what your background or skill level, you can quickly learn how to record music. Whether you're a guitarist who likes to just jam, or a band member who needs to get a recorded part to the other members in your group, or maybe you just want to share the music you make with the world, you can do so quickly with just the push of a few buttons. Technology has come a long way and has revolutionized nearly every part of our daily lives. This digital revolution has been disrupting the music industry for a few decades now. Today, not only can anyone make music at home on virtually any budget, but with a little knowledge and background, your home recordings can have the same high quality and defining characteristics as the recordings made at the legendary high-end studios that shaped countless classic records throughout the years. In this first video, I'm going to give you a brief history of modern recording and give you some recording terminology that you need to be familiar with. So let's talk a little bit about the past. You know, I love history and I always think it's a great place to start. But rather than just run through a bullet-pointed chronology of technology and techniques, which is beyond the scope of these videos, and honestly, many of which are obsolete today, I'd instead like to give you a brief history of modern recording. Bill Putnam Sr. is considered by many to be the father of modern recording. He was behind many pivotal inventions and many pioneering technologies that truly shaped the way music is made. But not only did he pave the way for generations to come, but many of the things he introduced are still widely used and sought after today. To start with, Bill Putnam Sr. invented the recording console. This allowed multiple channels to be recorded at the same time and utilized his legendary 610 preamplifier, which is an important milestone in recording history. The 610 preamp is considered the holy grail of vintage tube consoles and is famous among record producers for its detail and ability to overdrive signals in a warm and musical sounding way. The original 610 preamp was used on countless recordings, from the Beach Boys' Pet Sounds, to Johnny Cash's At Folsom Prison, to Ray Charles, Frank Sinatra, to Nat King Cole, and Van Halen. The more modern variant, the 610B preamp, helped create new classic recordings by artists such as Adele, Cold War Kids, and countless other recordings, both big and small. You know, reverb is one of the most widely used effects in music production. You're probably already familiar with reverb, which adds space and dimension to a sound. Out in the real world, reverb is the result of sound bouncing off of, of surfaces and reflecting that sound back to our ears. The time it takes that signal to come back to our ears helps us to interpret how large a space is. Imagine closing your eyes and playing your guitar in a closet. Now imagine closing your eyes and playing your guitar in a large cathedral. You could definitely tell just by the sound which one was in the cathedral. In the early days of recording, the room sound, or reverb, was dictated by the actual space you were in. Well, that all changed when Bill Putnam was the first person to use an echo chamber thought to be the first recording using artificial reverb. Another technology you're probably familiar with is an equalizer that boosts the bass or the treble of a sound signal. Yet again, Bill Putnam used the first multiband equalizer in the US and also was involved with two of the most iconic compressors of all time, the Teletronics LA-2A and Yuri 1176. We'll talk more about what compression is a bit later, but it's hard to overemphasize the importance those two units have made on modern music. In addition to equipment, along with his close friend, none other than Les Paul, Bill Putnam was involved in the early development of stereo recordings and also the process of multi-track recording. He also created the first recording of a single artist singing more than one line at a time in a single recording. He also invented the vocal booth, which is an isolated room in a recording studio that keeps the singer in a separate room from the other musicians for a cleaner sound. That idea was quickly expanded on and now referred to as an ISO booth or isolation booth, where you can put any player or instrument you want in there to isolate them from the other sounds. In fact, it's common to have a guitar amp in a totally separate room from the player so it can be cranked up louder and not affect the other recorded parts. In 1946, Putnam founded one of America's first independent recording studios, Universal Recording in Chicago, and went on to be one of the most sought after engineers and producers, a favorite of Frank Sinatra, Nat King Cole, Ray Charles, and so many more. Perhaps 
The main reason why he's considered the father of modern recording is that almost all of his biggest achievements still play a vital role in the recording of music, even to this day. The company he founded in 1958, Universal Audio, was revitalized in 1999 by Bill's two sons, James Putnam and Bill Putnam Jr. Today, Universal Audio is leading the way in cutting-edge technologies that stay true to the sound and spirit of vintage analog and incorporate that in a relevant way for today's digital recordings using a computer. Later on, we'll take a closer look at some of these technologies that are still revolutionizing the way we make music today.